when nothing is going well, uh, let's be very honest, a marriage that you've invested in with so much of love and care and also she has invested in, she married him when he was no one, I think he outgrew the relationship. You know, intellectually, I think he gigantically developed so much that it's very unfortunate. Someone maybe like Geeta, who was palpable, loving, warm, generous, may have been left behind. I'm not giving it a philosophical uh, analysis, but it is. We outgrow people. We outgrow relationships. We outgrow situations. We outgrow habits. So please remember this man married her when he was very young. And we don't know in this journey of life when depression got hold of him, there is no actual pinpointing what is the catalyst. But yes, failure is the biggest catalyst. Professional failure coupled with maybe he attributed the failure of their marriage to himself. Maybe he could not look carefully into the distance or look back carefully backwards and realize that I have outgrown the relationship. Accept it. Not feel guilty about it. Learn how to approach it and solve it. We can't do that when we are in the throes of depression. For that we need help. When I mean help, we need medical help. We need uh, psychological help. Uh, so, it was not that available in those days. First of all, self-denial. You have to recognize yourself that you need help. If you don't believe that you are suicidal, if you don't believe that you are depressed and you don't believe and then you put it under the carpet and go to work the next morning, it has to spring forth from somewhere. So the last few years of his life were definitely agonized and that's 100% because he underwent depression. There is a lot of rubbish. I'm, I'm again going to be very frank. Uh, I don't know if the rest of my family has been. There's been a lot of rubbish attributed to his death saying that Vahida Rahman ji was responsible for it. I am on camera stating it was not. She was not. Yes, there is no doubt all of us we fall in love with our muse. And when and how and why it happens, we don't know. I don't know whether he fell in love with her or whether it was just a very, very fine-tuned relationship that takes place on the set. When a director feels that magic, when the actor can actually give you more than what you want. Or let's say the actor can read your mind and give you that magic moment in front of the camera which you have not explained. There are so many little situations which build up. Then you must remember, he had an equally passionate loving relationship with Johnny Saab, with Rehman ji, with Mehmood ji, with SD Burman ji. So it was not, his profession was not just a profession. He was a very emotional person. So his expression of those emotions, I hope, would be accepted by today's generation in the right fashion. And I don't know who along the way in these 40 years gave this ridiculous uh, notion that he committed suicide over being uh, rejected by the woman he loved. I'm sorry. If that was the case, he would have left my aunt a long time back. He was too responsible a person. I keep saying that. He looked after his parents. He looked after his brothers and sisters, their education, their marriage. He looked after his children. He died a very wealthy man and left his children very wealthy. He kept the money and property in a trust for them, which they would get when they were 25. And today my cousin Arun is one of the wealthiest people in this country because of my uncle Gurudath only. So what I'm trying to say, he was not one of those irresponsible people who would commit suicide over a woman. Next, Kagas Ke Pool was not a story of his and Vahida Rehman's. Not at all. Now I'll show you the difference. 
A. The director and producer in Kagas Ke Pool becomes a reject has been. Guru Tankal till his death was not a reject has been. He died at the top of his career, highly successful. There he was a derelict, a dissolute, and an alcoholic. In personal life, he was very wealthy, very well placed, very well invested, and was not an alcoholic. Number three, there he dies in complete desolation. Desolation and hopelessness. And for that character, you can call him Hamlet or the Dark Knight. But not for the maker Gurudev. Gurudev uncle did not die in desolation. Gurudev uncle's death was an accident. Though he may have undergone depression, though he may have tried suicide earlier, that night it was just a heart attack. So I'm giving you all these differences. Number five. There, it was a glorified romance that fate decides to tear away. In real life, at the moment of his death, I'm going on record, he was not in love with anyone. To have had a heart attack over anyone, to have committed suicide over anyone, and on the contrary, he was extremely happy with the a uh, shaping up of bahare phir bhi aayengi he had spoken to raj sahab to tell him to come and watch the trial with him and to take his opinions on it so i just want to break that myth that kagaz ke phool was a um, story of his own life not at all and as wahida ji recently has said he apparently told his cast and crew that he was very influenced by a star is born so i guess see we, we we don't go into the actual areas uh, and we don't really know what convinces us to make a film so we keep giving our own um, what should i say our own decisions and reading and appreciation and rejection of a piece of work can you tell us something about you know like dev saab being the first person who yeah. have uh, gone into the bedroom where your uh, uncle died and uh, you know like could you just explain that last moment uh, how it unfolded yeah because uh, dev saab himself has told me this and then he repeated it on television for times now uh, the first person who was called was dev saab and by the time my mother and father and my grandmother and my uncles and all the others family members were called even wahida ji she was shooting in madras and i believe dev uncle was the first one to enter by that time ratan the valet and maybe somebody else had broken the door open because it was well uh, into late morning not and i think he was an early riser if i'm not mistaken so he was worried the valet when he broke open he was in rigor mortis in a position he was trying to reach out for help so obviously he was not suicidal but dev uncle says when he went in he saw him so frail so pale so full of pallor he used those three words and even when i met him about 2 years ago when uh, bhupen hazarika ji managed to get a stamp made in gurut uncle's memory and we had a very big release arun and bhupendra and myself went personally to call on dev uncle he couldn't come but he was so happy to see arun he said come here mujhe gurdat nazar aa raha hai because arun resembles him a lot you know and then he said do you know my autobiography is coming out and i have devoted a whole chapter on guru they all call him guru uh not guru because of guru but guru because of affection and that's when he said he said that uh, it was not suicide it was an accident Then my mother, of course, she told me more than anybody else that uh, he had taken sleeping tablets to sleep. We don't know whether it could have been a kind of uh, sometimes sleeping tablets wear you down and your reflexes become slow. So it's not an overdose of sleeping tablets. When he must have had a heart attack. 
the body and the mind reflex must have been too sleepy and slow. That's my reading of it. So I don't think there's anything to hide because all of us, the whole family has admitted he was suicidal because he tried two suicide attempts. So if he had committed suicide, what is there to hide? There's nothing to hide. So it's all bosh that he tried to commit suicide over some woman or any woman or a particular woman. And yes, life is such, sometimes you'll be surprised. You can be attacked by depression even when you're at the height of your glory. When you have everything in life, a great marriage, a great love relationship, a great career, a lot of money, wealth, adoration, fame, that's even more dangerous. Because you know from there you have to slide down sometime. So the uphill climb always keeps you going. But when you reach the zenith, you never know when it can hit you. What would you say is your favorite movie made by Gurudev? Sahibi Mirgulam. And would you elaborate why you like it so much? Sahibi Mirgulam to me, Akash, is truly a masterpiece of cinema in the annals of the Hindi cinema world. It is a quaint mixture of the traditional and the modern in terms of film craft. You are very right when you said that in terms of scripting, the ability to go backwards and forwards or let's say to recapitulate the past as a very sophisticated arrived at architect to a simpleton who is watching the uh, erosion of feudal values, who is watching the, the complete corrosion of the feudal uh, palaces who then comes years later to see that same glory in ruins. But what haunts him is an undying love from beyond. And kahi dur se awaz di, chale ao, chale ao, which Bahu, Choti Bahu, sang for her husband in utter devotion, is felt and heard by him through the mists of time. And he feels that she's calling out to him still. That first love that we all go through, that Bhutanath goes through, is the beauty of the, uh, what should I call it, the, the beauty of the narration and the intensity of the Gulam's love for Choti Bahu has withstood time. He is married to Gulabo, he comes back with Gulabo and even Gulabo has an understanding look. And then I can never forget that complete horror that strikes him, which strikes us, that skeletal hand with that gold bangle and then the dissolve into the beautiful hand of Meena Kumari's or Choti Bahu's, whose performance was one of the best in Indian cinema. I can say that. Her voice and you know, everything was interactive for the audience. Bhutanath, when he enters Choti Bahu's uh, boudoir for the first time, he's seated with his eyes down. The audience is watching him with his eyes down. Look at his camera placement and look at his thinking of the visual. And when the first time she says, Bhutanath, and everybody's made fun of him his whole life. Bhutanath, Bhutanath, simpleton, foolish. So he looks up. And when he looked up, the camera tilted up. And for the first time, the audience, along with Bhutanath, saw Choti Bahu. And what a beauty. And the same feeling that struck Akash or Kalpana or generations of cinema goers struck Bhutanath. We all fell in love with Choti Bahu the first time. Meena Kumari's most beautiful appearance. And Bhutanath also fell in love for the first time. So that capacity to capture the audience and to make the audience an interactive participant in the film, you would feel as an adult now when you see Sahibi Bir Gulam that you were actually there with Bhutanath that you actually saw through the chicks, the wooden chicks, 
यू एक्चुअली सॉ ऑन हर्ड विस्पर्स ऑफ अ ड्रंकन बड़े बाबू बींग छोटे बाबू बींग ब्रॉट बैक यू वुड एक्चुअली सी फ्रॉम अ डिस्टेंस यू आर देयर समवेयर इन द कन्फाइंस ऑफ दिस ब्रेकिंग रूइंस द ओल्ड जमींदार वाचिंग लाइक दैट सो द ईरीनेस ऑफ बींग अ पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ एक्चुअली विटनेसिंग हिस्ट्री एंड विटनेसिंग अनरिक्वेटेड लव ऑफ छोटी बहूज विथ छोटे साथ of the gulams with choti bahu i think is magnificent then for 1962 to be so udar so generous about the position of women there is that great scene in the carriage where choti bahu completely is inebriated and she puts her head on his lap and she is going it's the first actual movement of choti bahus when in a inebriated condition it's a sign of gratitude and he doesn't know whether to touch her and that pain the camera has captured when she takes her first drink just to keep her husband with her and then the pain with which she is rejected when he's bored the agony when he's dying and she's drunk and he tells her bas aur mat peena then the loneliness the desolation after death when uh, his cousin brother dhumal explains again in flash see the flashbacks and flash forwards the chote babu nahi rahe and there was that brilliant piece of music toy and the curtains flowing up and down and the window is quiet and you'll be surprised his home in matunga in bombay had the similar kind of windows and the curtains blowing those are all motifs of his life of his bengal life of his bombay life somewhere he has managed to weave that fabric of his agony into the agony of bimal mitra's master novel then as you said the whole question of timelessness with those zillions of clocks tak 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 tik 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 and this weird mad clock keeper um running in shadows and moving from light to shade looking like death with that skite you know in ingma bagman's films you see death belying time and walking with that skite you feel that ghadi uh, babu as he was called is for telling the future of doom you know all that that is of course also great bimal mitra's writing we cannot deny that but the capacity to translate it onto visuals and the fantastic play of light and shadow of the dances where meenu mumtaz comes to perform and bhutnath is sitting outside and just those hand fans moving up and down all the chorus girls are in darkness and only a pool of light over meenu mumtaz and as the mm, fans move you see those cruel eyes of sapru with the hukka suddenly getting lit suddenly turning dark suddenly getting lit suddenly turning dark so you know each scene each shot you can see the hard work you can see the time taken you can see the mm, cinematic genius in writing in perfection of performances in art decor as you said in being able to portray timelessness with time even though it's written well to cinematically make it well the only compromise which he had to make i believe was i don't know whether he had to make or he made it or what that he comes in the very end which is the beginning we don't see her in the beginning but we see her in the very end wahida rehman seated in that carriage and where he sits on that and drives away but wahida ji herself told me she says i'm probably the only heroine who has worked in most of his films as the side heroine and been remembered the most very very strange and look at the generosity of wahida who was by then definitely the 
stronghold of the Gurdath film Bastion allowed Meena Kumari to play that central character. Who wouldn't want to play that character? But I can't think of anyone else but Meena Ji who could have played that character, you know. And uh, again, uh, look at Gulabo's generosity as a person. She understands that he was her childhood husband. But I think in the book, he goes away and doesn't get her. But I think for the Indian audience, he had to make a full circle somewhere in some relationship. So that traditional context of being a low caste gets married. And the beauty of the story of Vimal Mitra is the belief the Hindu woman has in the power of the Sindhul. And that is something that is so heart-wrenching and so wonderfully written by Vimalda. And you have to give Vimalda 100% as you would give Gurudat 100%. Sahabi Ber Gulam definitely is Gurudat's product because when you see it in comparison to the director who made the Bengali version, I don't know who he was, there's heaven and hell of a difference. Though I will be forced to say on, tele, uh, on uh, screen now, the performance of Uttam Kumar was far superior as Bhutnath than Gurudats. I'll be very fair. Because I think when you're a writer, director, producer, there tends to be that slight neglect of yourself as an actor. Uh, and also by then, I felt Gurudat uncle had put on a lot of weight and was letting himself go. He was not the ideal hero material. And then, you know, he had worn a wig and trying to look like a simpleton somehow didn't suit that highly intelligent brow. You know what I mean? He was too intelligent on his face to pass off as a simpleton. There, I have to admit, Uttam Kumar is a far greater actor than any of these actors. So he was able to carry out the simpleton Bhutanath with utter simplicity. But as a film, the Hindi version is a milestone.